Nutrition is a basic right for everyone. If our young people are not strong physically, mentally, ethically, it's not possible to think about our good future, about our healthy future. Adolescent health and nutrition has definitely been neglected. It's the time to build our body, it's the time to build our mind, it's the time to build um, as a leader mentally and, um, and physically also. The problem has really uh, transitioned over the years. We are moving out of poverty little, little by little, but now the focus uh, has to be in terms of what a kind of information are giving to adolescents for them to have the right food. Education and government politics are the two main things that should be adopted by all countries around the world. Malawi, India, Bangladesh, and especially in Madagascar, our food system is not adolescent friendly, is not youth friendly. It leads to a vicious cycle in which bad food means bad health, means uh, more stress, potentially more bad food in the future. Nearly 20% of adolescents in China are overweight or obese. I urge introducing food education into the classrooms. My call to, first of all, the governments would be that invest in prevention rather than cure. The change that I want to see in adolescent nutrition systems in my country is that foods that have high nutritional benefits must be more affordable and accessible. We should give emphasis to the youth nutrition, to the youth health and to the um, youth rights. I see an opportunity here that uh, right now I think the world has kind of opened uh, their ears for young people to be listened to. So we need to capitalize on this opportunity for young people to come together and uh, speak with one voice in terms of what do we want uh, in our communities. We need more young people to be involved. Have them in the room, give them a seat at the table because that is because they are going to be not only the future but they are also the present.